Hi, so let's take another quick look at this. This is, um, well, this is what's left of a Tesla European CCS adapter. After I managed to get it open, it did take rather a lot of applied violence to get this thing apart. It's, it's made in two parts, and the two parts are held together with these sort of pins, which have got like barbed ends, so I think you know, it gets pressed apart, and then it just, there's no way it ever comes apart again without just completely destroying the, um, the other end. Um, thanks very much to uh, viewer Clive who donated this uh, to have a look at. Now, as I suspected, there's no sort of electronics in this. Obviously, the Tesla and the CCS talk completely different protocols, but um, at some point, Tesla upgraded the charge port board in the car to support CCS natively, so this is basically just a pin-out adapter. There are, there are sort of a few interesting little details in it, nonetheless. So this side, this takes the standard um, Type 2 CCS combo plug, like that. This side plugs into the car, this side needs to be plugged in first, then this, when this gets plugged in there's a plunger in the middle of the earth pin that when that gets pushed down that engages this locking pin so sort of this is connected to the CCS plug, this is then plugged into the car which locks this and then the, the, you know, the car then locks this part into the car because obviously you really don't want this coming out under load, you've got sort of a couple of hundred amps at 400 odd volts, it could be uh, somewhat spectacular. The Tesla solutions are fast charging is so much better than this. The CCS, I mean, CCS is horrible in so many ways. There's this ridiculous funky connector. There's an utterly stupid protocol that they've used. Whereas what they've done is they've taken the standard um, Type 2 connector and they're using two pairs of the mains pins to provide DC in. It's a much more elegant solution. It doesn't really require much more in the car in terms of switchover. And in fact, you could even, you know, th these could in principle go to the input of an AC charger without actually needing to be switched because uh, yeah, the input of a mains charger could quite happily take 400 volts DC as long as there's the appropriate fusing in there yeah, the, you'd still need the contactor for the DC charging so there's not really much else needed in the car this would be a much nicer solution but unfortunately we're, we're stuck with the uh, dog's breakfast that is CCS so this has got uh, sort of these, these two pairs of pins these seem to be uh, a moulding of very hard plastic over a sort of copper bar so I imagine these are pretty riveted or welded into the uh, the bar. Inside here there's sort of two components. Uh, one is a thermal cutout. You can see that both bus bars rest on the back of this thermal set. I think there was a con uh, some sort of thermal pad on there as well so if you've got overheating of either pin on either bar on either side, yeah, both of those find their way to this thermal cutout, so that's quite a nice, uh, neat way of achieve, yeah, achieving safety. And that, that cutout simply interrupts the um, control pilot signal, so that just cuts off communication. So both ends will shut off as soon as that happens. Um, the other thing that's in here is there's a little switch when this earth pin gets pushed down by the connector in the car, it pushes down this, this whole assembly, so that both pushes these latch pins out and also operates this little push button switch so again it will only uh, see that uh, control pilot signal yeah, if this is fully pressed in and it's not over temperature that's sort of quite a neat solution but yeah sort of quite a nicely uh, nicely made thing sort of obviously nice quality uh, contact pins sort of springs to ensure the contact tension double o-rings on all the places where it goes into the uh, plastic so it's sort of quite a nice nicely made thing and say very very difficult to take to pieces because of the way it's been uh, constructed.